When I look at a lawyer's practice, I look for three things. One, what are their immediate pain points? Two, what can we clean up first that will be the biggest domino to knock over and will have the biggest impact on making their lives easier? And three, I'm keeping my ears perked for areas they've been ignoring that we can sort out to expand the impact of their energetic and financial resources. In other words, streamlining. This episode will help you start looking for some of those areas for yourself and cleaning them up to get back your own resources. Hey, hey, I hope your week is going well. This has been a really fun week for me because I've been dishing up some plans that I'm going to share with you in just a little bit. And whenever I'm creating something new, I really feel energized. It really lights me up. But it's also been a week where I'm maxing myself out to get work done. Okay. And I want to share this with you because it's not a complaint. It's just a reality check. Okay, because sometimes we hear people on podcasts or we see people on social media and we think, wow, their life's so perfect. Or you might listen to me and think, wow, she must just have everything so perfectly laid out in her life. And I want to just shine a little light on that. I create as much harmony as possible between my personal life and between my work life. But I also love my work. I enjoy work. And I don't want to kill myself and I pay attention. I'm mindful that I'm not doing that. I'm giving myself lots of white space. I'm giving myself that time I need in the morning for quiet time and space in the evenings to wind down. But there really hasn't been a lot of downtime this week because I really wanted to get these projects moving. I planned it that way so it wasn't a surprise, but I wanted to let you know that sometimes there are just weeks where you plan more on your calendar than usual, and that's okay. And it's been a really great reminder that we can consciously choose how we spend our time. And I could have put, pushed back my plans, but I decided that I wanted to follow through with my timetable for the year. And that just means that some weeks I'm going to have more on my calendar than others. That is a conscious choice that I've made for myself this year. Maybe I'll revisit it later, but I want to follow through with my plans. So I hope that gave you a little peek into my life so you can see that I'm always working to consciously choose how I spend my time. And sometime I, sometimes I'll have more rest than others, but as long as we're making our choices consciously and we're not letting our businesses or our practices run our lives, I'd say we're winning, okay? And watching the stress levels, right? I don't let myself get stressed. I remind myself everything's going to be fine. You know, if things don't get done exactly the right time, I'm going to figure it out. And that's so important to remind yourself that your mindset during those times when you do consciously schedule things on your calendar is clean. All right. So let's talk today about shining a light on areas of your practice that might be draining you energetically or even financially, which really they go together. When I say energetics, I mean time. I mean frustration, all of that time ruminating about things that are going on in your practice. So why is it so hard to see these things? Well, there's a few reasons for that. And I call them the four eyes. I came up with a really fancy thing. It just came to me. It's ignorance, inertia, isolation, and impulse. So we do these things sometimes just out of ignorance. You don't know what you don't know. There's no way to change something in your life to streamline something that you've never even thought about before. Or inertia, if you've been practicing any length of time, you've had mentors or somebody who told you how to do things, and then you just kept doing them out of habit. Or isolation, you haven't had exposure to new ideas, or you haven't had someone to talk to through different areas of your practice, so you don't even see there's an issue. Or impulse, maybe you try something new and it works at first, but at the first sign of it not working, I put that in quotation marks, you give up and you go back to the old system. You really haven't given the new way a chance or evaluated how it could be altered to make it work. And your first impulse is just to go back to the old habit. So today, I want to partner with you to really shine a light on areas that maybe you've never looked at before. 
there are an infinite number of areas we could talk about in our practice or in your practice, right? But I've chosen three in today's episode because I see them pop up quite a bit. Number one, how you track and follow up on leads. Two, potential areas of your practice you can consolidate to save time and become more profitable. And three, how to move cases along faster in your practice. As we go along, I'll be giving you questions to ask yourself in your own practice to answer. So even if your issues aren't exactly like the ones I'm sharing in this episode, you can ask yourself how you can use this information to help you streamline your own practice. Now, at this point, you may be saying, this is beautiful. I need this. I can start here, but how do I think about my practice holistically? How do I prioritize to achieve my larger goals in my practice? And where might these pieces you're giving me here today fit in? If that's you, I have some really exciting news. I have created a course that will help you with just that. It's called Precision Planning for Law Firm Growth, your step-by-step planning process to create your most profitable and peaceful year in the law yet. The problem most law firm owners make is they set themselves up for failure from the start. In this course, I'm giving you the framework and other tools you need to increase the likelihood of you achieving your goals even before you start taking action. It's coming out at the end of February, but I have created a wait list that you'll want to get on right now now. Because when you do, you're going to be the first to know about special bonuses I'm creating to introduce this course. And when my one-on-one clients went through this program, they got energized to take action. One said she had never thought about planning and strategizing achieving goals in this way before. Another said it made her feel excited about her practice again. Precision planning for law firm growth gives you actionable steps you can take to grow your practice without overworking yourself to the point of exhaustion. To get on the wait list and ensure you are the first to know about all the surprises I have in store, go to dinacataldo.com forward slash 2024. That's dinacataldo.com forward slash 2024. I can't wait to bring this to you in just a few short weeks. It's going to be amazing. All right, let's dig into this episode. When I look at a lawyer's practice, I'm looking for three things. What are their immediate pain points? What's the biggest domino we can knock over to make their life easier? And then I am always keeping my ears perked up. I'm always looking for those little areas where we can streamline, where we can really create a system, something that will help them make their lives easier and is going to give them not only their time back, but maybe create more profitability in their practice. So those areas that I'm looking for, that I'm I'm really kind of like have my radar open for, those areas have become so old hat that they just haven't thought twice about them. Or maybe my clients have noticed them, but they really just draw a blank when they think about another, another way of doing things. So here's a quick example. Just this week, I was talking to an estate planning client who made a side remark and my ears perked up. I asked some questions and I learned she'd been charging for consults, but then what she would do is she would tell potential clients that if they hired her, then that consult fee would then be wrapped up in the package that they purchased. But this was causing a few issues like no-shows at consults, taking a spot someone else could have taken. But one of the biggest issues I keyed into was that she was shortchanging herself because when we looked at the numbers, it didn't make sense. The time and the effort that she was investing with the client was more than what she was being paid. So in a few minutes, we talked through the numbers figured out what made sense, and she created a system where her receptionist would not only schedule a consult, but would also take payment over the phone before the consult to reserve their spot. The consult would be separate from her planning package, so there was no confusion. There was no wrapping anything up. It was just, no, whether or not you decided to move forward with her or not, you get you char- get charged for the consult. So when we make decisions like this, it can feel scary, right? Because it's new and that's where the mindset work comes in. So we work on easing the transition into doing those things that feel impossible. But you can see how just this little tweak 
can make a powerful impact. With this little tweak alone, she now has the ability to make an additional $60,000 in her practice, right? And just save so much time and aggravation. So pretty amazing when you start looking at these little areas where you're you're just keeping your ears open, you're thinking about those little frustrations and you're you're working on them. Imagine what you would do with an extra $60,000 in your practice, right? You could go on a fancier vacation. You could invest in another employee, take more time off. It's a really big deal when you find these areas to clean up. So I told you that there were three areas we were going to cover today. So let's get started with the first one, how you track and follow up on leads. If you are like a lot of my clients, their first contact with a new person is through a phone call and it's usually a referral. But do you have a way to track and follow up with leads? Maybe you do a consult and the person walks out the door and you never hear from them again. Maybe you get a phone call and the potential client asks a question, but you don't get their number or their email to follow up with them. Maybe you talk to someone at the grocery store who's interested and you've just given them your card, but you haven't gotten their contact information, their email, their phone number. If this sounds like you, how much could it be costing you not tracking and following up on these people? $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, more? It sounds so simple when I say it here, but creating an Excel spreadsheet with the date of contact, name of the person, contact info, notes about the conversation, and how and when you followed up can really make a difference here. These are things we often don't think about. It's pure ignorance because it's never even crossed our mind. We're so busy doing other things, it just doesn't occur to us. This one tweak will really make an impact if you're not collecting the names and contact numbers of people you have consults with, conversations with, and then following up. You can even have your assistant follow up with them. So I want you to ask yourself this question. What's one thing you can do this week that will help you begin tracking your potential clients and then following up with them. All right, let's move on to the second area. Potential areas of your practice you can consolidate to save time and be more profitable. Consolidating smaller tasks into one discrete task can feel liberating. It's easy to get caught up doing a little here and doing a little there, but not really feeling like you're making much progress. So let's change that. I have a client who has a very specialized real estate practice. Her habit over the years, and this habit has made her a lot of money, it was just taking her a lot of her time. It has been to talk to a prospective client on the phone who has a question. And then she would get back to them with an answer by email. Maybe get on the phone with them again, maybe have a few more email back and forth calls. And then eventually they settle on whether or not they're going to work together. And sometimes a lead would just disappear, right? She just wouldn't even think about following up with them. And she was keeping this all in her head, right? Imagine keeping all of this information in her head. She had no tracking system. Well, clearly this has worked for her because she's doing well, but she's also scaling her practice. She has 13 employees and is growing, Managing a team like that requires she let go of old practices and try new ones that free up her time and free up her brain space. So this topic came up purely by me listening to those tiny sentences that we say that are just throwaway sentences, the ones that indicate we're just a little frustrated, right? It's so tiny that we just wouldn't register it on our own. Like we were talking about numbers in her practice and she mentioned the topic of calls as a side note. And I saw an opportunity there to ask a question and to help her maybe find a process that would help her streamline what she was doing. So I asked her if she was open to exploring that. So when we did, she realized she had an opportunity to turn this prolonged conversation into a consult that she could put on her calendar, this discrete task that no longer took up brain space. It was just something that took up a a discrete space on her calendar. It wouldn't be back and forth for days with a potential client and increasing the likelihood of abandoning that lead because she had a harder time tracking these interactions. 
So we brainstormed and I suggested a test. So outline a process for just one type of matter coming into your office where your receptionist would receive a call and set a consult up on the calendar. The client would pay for that consult in advance. You would outline a document that walked them through step-by-step step what to expect before and during the consult and give them a checklist of all of the documents that they would need to bring with them to this consult. And she could take 10 of these people in one month and just try it out and see what happens, then tweak the process from there if she liked it. Now, here's the other thing. Instead of just doing this free call for this prolonged period of time, create a consult where they're paying in advance, where they're actually making a deposit with your receptionist at the time that they call and schedule the appointment. She liked that, right? She's no longer spending all of this time with a potential client and instead is saying, oh, okay, well, I'm going to put an hour on my calendar. We're going to have a really fruitful conversation. I'm going to lay out a plan for them. And not only that, but it's not going to be free time anymore. Now I'm actually getting paid for my time. So this strategy has the potential for her to really manage her time and energy around talking to new potential clients and increasing her profitability since now she's going to be charging for the work that she was already doing, but she was doing it for free. So if you're looking to free up time with small tasks, I want you to ask yourself this, where are you spending a lot of time piecemealing a project or a process or a conversation in your practice? but you can condense all of those small steps into a more doable step. How can you make it easier on yourself and your staff? How much more time or profitability will you have when you take that step? All right, so now let's talk about the third area, how to move cases along faster in your practice. So if you struggle to get cases moving in your practice, this is one where you're gonna wanna pay attention to. Think about how this could apply to you. One of the biggest complaints I hear from lawyers, all lawyers, doesn't matter what practice area, is that they do the work, then they just have things that hold up the process, right? Something holds up the process, whether it's the client or another party or something, holding up the process. So this can feel really defeating because we don't think we have any control over the situation. So I want to put you back in the driver's seat with this section that we're talking about here. I want you to ask yourself these three questions. If you've kind of drifted off, bring your attention back here because these three questions can be used in so many areas of your life. Ask yourself these three questions. One, what do I think the problems are moving these cases? Two, if I think someone or something else is the problem, where might I be contributing to the problem? And three, what can I do differently to help move cases along? See how these questions give you more power, how they really put you in the driver's seat. You're no longer blaming. You're now taking responsibility in the way that you need to in order to take back some semblance of control in your practice. Hey, I had an estate planning client who was in this exact situation where she had cases she wanted to move along, and it was incredibly frustrating for her to manage her workflow and her finances because of a wall she felt that she had hit. She saw two problems. One, she was not able to prioritize her time well based on how she was scheduling things. So she would have an estate planning client come in for a consult. Um, she would say, okay, I'll have your work done by such and such date. And then that date came and went. The client didn't come back and schedule a closing or you know, they didn't follow up with the assistant or whatever was happening, but it took forever to get a closing date on the calendar. And so she was spending all of this time up front working on these projects. And then she could have been working on something else because the client Obviously, it wasn't as much of a priority to them, she thought, right? So then two, the second problem she saw was is she wasn't getting paid if the client wasn't setting up a closing date. Really frustrating, right? You do all this work and then you don't get paid for it because they haven't shown up. 
So here is the solution she devised. And she did this when she started really putting herself back in that driver's seat. What she would do is she would create a contract that clearly states that they will set a date certain for the closing date. She would put that date on her calendar while they were in the consult. Additionally, she would have a clause in her contract that said as soon as the work was completed, that the money paid into trust would then be released into her account. Such a beautiful solution, right? Like it really just, you put a contract down, you tell the client, okay, let's agree on a date now for you to come in. You put that date on the calendar and more often than not, they're going to show up because they know it's an, a date certain right? There's no doubt that's the date we're going to have it done. And then you know, you can manage your time because you know that there's a date certain for that particular matter. And the client's happy because they feel like it's a complete package. It's all set up. You're happy because you can manage your time. And if they have to reschedule that call, well, the work is done. You're still going to get paid because that clause allows you to get paid. So here's where I put my lawyer hat on and I say, check with your local rules to make sure you comply with them whenever you do something like this. Okay, so let's cover what we went over today because we got all, we covered a lot of ground. So first of all, don't let ignorance, inertia, isolation, or impulse be the reason you don't create solutions for your practice. Talk to other lawyers, try new things, and get the help you need. Second, Keep your ears perked for how you talk about your practice. Are you verbalizing frustrations and then zooming past them, or are you recognizing frustrations and doing something about them? Third, if you haven't created a simple tracking and follow-up system for leads, you can save yourself a lot of time, brain space, and profit by doing so. Fourth, look for areas in your practice taking long amounts of time and see if you can consolidate them into shorter pockets of time. Finally, if you're struggling to move cases along in your practice, ask yourself, what can I do to control what I can control? If you want to grow your practice and you want a partner to really help you talk through how to streamline your practice, how to get you your time back, and to really just make your life easier, I am here for you. Book a strategy session with me at dinacataldo.com forward slash strategy session. You and I are going to talk about how we will help you create a finely tuned instrument that works in harmony with your life. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will talk to you next week.